Good morning and welcome to the Senior Hour, which is sponsored by Santa Clarita In-Home Care and Advanced Audiology. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station AM 1220 KHTS. This is a show for, about, and by seniors, giving information to enhance one's quality of life. And speaking of quality of life, we have as our first guest this morning, Margie Vies of Oakmont of Santa Clarita. Hi, how, how you are doing? you? Good. Good, good to morning, see you. Good morning, Welcome back. Thank and you. And we're, congratulations are in order for you. <laughs> yes, we had, um, we had a granddaughter. Um, she's six weeks old. So how about two grandchildren in seven months? Not bad, huh? Whoa. Not bad, not and someone has been busy. <laughs> yeah, not me. <laughs> but yeah, really exciting. Um, so how many, though, grandparents do you think you have living at your, where, where you live at your facility? There must be lots. I think probably almost every resident every that lives at Oakmont has, is, a grand. has a grandchild, is a grandparent. And I've heard rumor that we even have a great, great grandparent living in the community. Wow. So Wow, that's very wonderful. Special. I'm a great grandparent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Almost six. Gonna, wow, almost six, six great. Wow. Almost six. Wow. She's she's getting there, but not quite there yet. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's the stories that you hear, you know, oh, there's nothing like being a grandparent. Well, let me tell you, it's pretty fun. <laughs> mm. We're enjoying it. And um I believe next month, well, actually, we're in September. Um, yep, yep. It is Grandparents Day. I believe it's September 11th. So we all mm, need 7 to 11. think That's something special. No, 9 11. 9 11, yeah. 9 18. Maybe okay. 9 18. It's right in there, though. I know. Grandparents Day. It's Grandparents Day. So um, be sure that you honor your honor. grandparent. There's lots of ways that we can do that, I think. Mm hmm. Um, and the big thing that you've talked about before is a legacy. Develop your own legacy. Right, right. I talk, think it's talk to your family about where you've been, what you've done. Right. You know, it's not bragging. It's just rectifying things, putting things on a line, uh, so people can recognize it in the future. Right, and I think like a great activity that someone can do with their grandparent is bring old pictures or, or ask mm -hmm. your grandparent or your great grandparent, do you have some old pictures that we can go through and um, try to get them to tell stories, write notes on the back of the pictures so that you know who that is or where that was, get them to talk about that story because it, it helps both ways. It helps you learn more about your family and your history and who you are, but it's also a great way for your grandparent or your great grandparent to leave that legacy to go back in memories, to remember those good times. It's a great brain grain, brain game for someone mm -hmm. that might be dealing um, with dementia or Alzheimer's. Those are the mm -hmm, memories sure. that are still there. So it would be fun, you know, for both. People right now are, are into recreating photographs. So you find an old photograph and get your sister and brother and try to find a place either, you know, at the same place or however you want to do it, but try to recreate that photograph. That's a really fun activity, getting people mm -hmm. um, involved. And also looking to their ancestry, going back. I mean, it's it's hard because you have to look through records and in some places in the world they're you know, there haven't been records. Right. But uh, if you start establishing that record right now, uh, it'll make a big difference for those in the future. Right. And there is so, some subtle information that I think fails to get passed down. And right. because it doesn't, then we might not recognize uh, any connections in the family. Right. Um, even it's so easy. Just take out your iPhone or, you know, your cell phone and hit video you could record it you can mm -hmm. get their voice you can actually you know get that story that's another really easy fun way and then you can download it you know to a hard drive you could put it on a disc with all the apps that are out there you know you can you could actually make a little movie about about your history and again mm -hmm. it, it gets everybody engaged everybody included yeah the whole family gets mm -hmm. involved and that's what uh, we're talking about at Oakmont right. you know f family and you know whether all the different generations and I know right. you have that over there with when you go around there's a lot of kids you Absolutely. Know, running as well as the pets running around. I mean, you have all of it. <laughs> We're all happening running around. There, and, and the corn is growing, and the tomatoes are as well. I mean, yeah, it's great. Everything's growing. Speaking of tomatoes, tying it into Grandparents Day, 
-hmm. take a favorite recipe that that maybe your grandmother or your grandfather made or a great grandparent and you know make that recipe and and share that food whether it's um, you know, I know my husband loves this Hungarian cake that his grandmother made, and I always say, you know, I'm going to make it. Not that I ever have, but this might be the opportunity. Or um, in our family, the tradition is at some of the Jewish holidays, my grandmother made kefilte fish. Mm-hmm. What so, is kefilte fish? Uh, you don't want to know. It's, I don't? It's a lot of different fishes that um, are chopped, like a white fish and a pike and another fish. and then you grind like onions and carrots Mm -hmm. and egg and it's a process of mixing it and then you make a fish broth and you make the patties Mm -hmm. and you put and it's a long-standing tradition in our Mm -hmm. family it takes a lot of time it sounds like it um, you know my mom made it i I made it but my daughter my daughter-in-law it's kind of a rite of passage into our family and now we have you know my granddaughter Maya she'll be making it our mm-hmm. grandson Jack, he'll be making it we don't make him eat it but you know <laughs> Why? that's funny it's an acquired taste you either like it or you don't I yeah. happen to like it mm-hmm. but um, but they'll like we've it. got my mom on video we have my grandmother's actual recipe mm-hmm. you know in her handwriting so those are treasures that yeah. um, that are a part of who you are and, and it's a great way and that's a really fun activity not that you have to make kefilte fish but a cookie you know a dessert something do it as a group videotape it if you want write down that recipe and and you've got it to hand down to that next generation and it's funny because a lot of the traditions that we do have are lost Absolutely. and by speaking and gaining that legacy you can preserve some of those bring some of those back uh, so you don't lose those traditions i think it's important that we in our country you know we a lot of us come from other countries and i think it's important that you know we develop our culture here but also the culture where we've come from and maintain that and that's a part of who we are because it it strengthens us i think from inside i i couldn't say it better and and i i so believe in that um, I think our seniors really struggle as they get towards end of life. How am I going to be remembered? Am I going to be remembered? Mm-hmm. You know, <clears throat> how are you going to remember me? And these are ways to to get what's important from you know your grandparent. Um, what was important to them in their life? What mm-hmm. made them who they are? And how are you going to carry that on? to the generations because you're right once we lose that generation if we don't know about it it, it's gone it's lost Mm -hmm. it's lost you know you can find a box of pictures you don't you don't know who those four men are you don't know what that beach was you don't know Mm -hmm. where they spent the summers or their first job or are the hardships that they went to to get us Mm -hmm. to where we are now so um it's one day, you know, coming up in September, Grandparents' Day, but mm-hmm. it's something that we can be doing, you know, throughout. I think it's really, really important. Yeah, it, I agree with you, and I have a few pictures from my parents. And unfortunately, when I was growing up, we lived in Charlotte, North Carolina, <clears throat> and my father was the manager of the Charlotte Country Club, and we lived in a house on the property, but it was a down, down the hill, and it had a big basement, We had unbelievable rains, and the basement flooded. All of my parents' history was gone. I mean, it was completely soaked. We tried to retrieve some of it, but it was impossible. Yeah. And some of the uh, some of the pictures that um, they had, of course, weren't down below. But I have most of those pictures, and there's one in there of my dad, and we're sitting on a beach. And I'm sitting beside him playing in the sand. And I do not know where that beach is. It's in England somewhere, Mm -hmm. but I don't know where. Well, that's a challenge. I know it is. Maybe we can check some background out and see if we can figure out the longitude, the latitude, and everything else that's there, that thing, (laughs) GPS it. (laughs) Well, you know, it's interesting because you hear a lot about Mm Ancestry.com, where lots of people have been able to trace their past through that and I've considered doing that myself Mm -hmm. I do have a lot of my own history that I'm writing down Mm -hmm. so that my kids and grandkids and great grandkids will know where I came from and what happened to me when I was a little girl because I grew up during the war Second World War 
and some very frightening things happened to me that I will never ever forget. Mm-hmm. And it sort of shaped my life. Mm-hmm. And um, the only the only thing I remember about my father is always saying goodbye to him. Wow! Mm-hmm. Because he was always he'd come home for a weekend, and then he was back in the Royal Navy, and he was gone. Mm-hmm. Right. So I was always saying bye, Dad. Bye, Dad. And that really affected me as I got older. Right. You know. But and have amazing. you ever shared that with your family? Have you ever? Yes. Told, yeah. Yes. And it's, on the show here. In, and on the show. Yeah. And I've written it down too. But it's you know, write, writing the documents, the photos. There is nothing better than a video now, mm-hmm. a tape recording of the family, because yeah. uh, when you get that individual to speak, you're hearing the emotional part of right. it as well. You know, right. just just having a photo, it says something. Okay, yes, we don't know where the beach is, right? But it will say something to you. But when you have the ability to put emotion in it, mm-hmm. it changes the whole sense and the feeling. You know, for people, what you just said, you know, suffering with your father leaving, that was an emotional part of your life. Oh, it that was. I know your, your grandkids already know about, and you've been able to express that to them. But there are some people that just don't encase that and, and imprint it anywhere in life. And this is what we should be doing, not just writing about it, but videotaping our, our seniors who are out there who have history. And, you know, you can become a reporter and get all the quest- right. question them. And where did you go? What did you do? How did you feel? And if you... If you catch that and understand that, it it makes a big difference in then understanding your past. Right. And it's such an easy thing to do. And I remember um, at my old community, we had some volunteers that came in that um, that volunteered to sit with seniors and just get them to talk. They had um, permission from the resident and the family member. And if anybody that's out there listening, if that's something that they think they would like to do, um, you know, contact Oakmont. That's a great way um, to be giving to the community. Um, and I know it would be really appreciated by our residents. We do it um, with our residents, but, you know, it's with staff and and there's it's, time it's right. There's yes, a time I can factor with that. it. But if right. somebody is interested in volunteering and wants to do something like that, we have a lot of seniors that have so many fabulous stories about their travels you know we have people that have traveled they've gone on hundreds and hundreds of cruises and they've seen the world and they've lived through the depression and they lived through the war and they didn't have much and we have others that um you know worked with movie stars and Mm -hmm. and worked in the government and there's so much history just in this community everybody has a story yeah you're right that's a great part of it that's exactly true everyone has a story i i remember i was at a course kind of learning about this and their comment was and it and it so stuck with me that was every time a senior passes away it's like a library has burned down Mm -hmm. that's right Uh, um and that just really stuck with me because there there is so much history and knowledge and we're not aware of it and certainly our children and our children's children you know they don't have really a clue what not what the clue. world was like and and how fortunate they are now in so many ways i think as you get older you start to reflect a little bit but you know the younger generation are here and now whereas as you get older and start to look back because now you have history you know but you're looking as you're looking forward and you're seeing your parents and grandparents are going what is their history? And our hope right. is that those who are listening now in the community, the young, younger generation, will start a little bit earlier. Right. Uh, because to, at some point, re- remember that uh, at any point, at any time, we could, your loved one can s- stop remembering some of these things and you can lose that so take the opportunity right now let's share it while you can ask the questions that need to be asked and you i think it's a whole new arena that you're looking at once you start to do that right you get to know them at at a different level Mm -hmm. that you didn't know which is a a fun it's a more personal level Mm -hmm. and that really makes a difference with the relationship with that person that's one of the funnest things that i find in, in my role as the executive director, you know, I, I know all my residents, I know my families, and I was talking with a resident who is much, much older, um, and in talking with her, never in my life would I have known she was um, a burlesque dancer. 
and then she brought out pictures and it's like at first glance you know she we're, was we're a seeing what? burlesque, a, a burlesque dancer, dancer. Yes. and yes. we're seeing just you know this this pinpoint in their time but yet she's had 96 years before I ever met her mm-hmm. um, and she took out these pictures and I just I was blown away and mm-hmm. it, you have to remember again they our residents these these seniors they they have a whole life of experience that if mm-hmm. we would just take the time um, to spend a few minutes and That's talk right. with them the stories right. that you would find out would they would blow your mind remember one of your residents uh, where you were before was in the ice capades yes and she had these photos and her memory was not real good but i walked into her room and she mm-hmm. had these photos and um they were just in a box mm-hmm. and she as she pulled them out i could see that she was part of the ice capades yeah. and you know that wasn't you had to be very talented to Absolutely. be able to do that but Absolutely. you know something even with her memory deficits, as I asked her about the ice capades, she remembered all of that. Right. And it was just exciting for me to explore all the past, everything that she had done, getting to the ice capades, and then what happened afterwards. After. And I don't know if you remember, we had a resident that was the interpreter to General MacArthur. Wow. And had dementia and you know couldn't remember what she had for breakfast but the story she told about traveling with him and interpreting for him was amazing so again on this grandparents day whether you have a grandparent or a great grandparent or you're just friends with a senior take the time hear a story document it share a picture um it'll go a long way yeah it definitely will it definitely will and how many seniors do you have in your complex we have right off the um, end over a hundred over a hundred a hundred stories uh-huh. hundred yep. stories hundreds of hundreds of hundreds stories of hundreds of that's stories, right that's for sure so yeah. and hopefully their their children when they come to visit them hopefully they pen and pad with pull you pull out yeah. of each of or, those or your singles. iPhone either yes. one will work yes. right whatever we're, will work we're so lucky that we have such great family involvement at our community um, mm-hmm. our residents they're very blessed. They have wonderful families. Well, we can tell by your excitement, your enthusiasm, and also your sentiment toward them that it's some, you're, you're, you've been able to bring out a lot of their lives in, in front of you and explore that. And to me, that's exciting because you're, you're taking their past and bringing it to the present mm-hmm. and allowing it to flourish again. Yeah. Yeah, you found your niche. Didn't oh, you? definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and you're there to stay. Definitely. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Margie, for thank visiting you. us and telling us a little more about uh, Oakmont. Absolutely. And um, we'll be back. You'll be back to see us again. Sounds mm-hmm. great, Barbara. Thank Terrific. you. Terrific. Thank you. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS.